Hey y'all, it's the Black Ink Review. This is my fourth time trying to do this damn video. And the reason why that is because you know how it you first try to do video, sound will go right, something don't go right, whatever. You know, you try to retake it. But I actually did a full all uh, 30 something minutes review just not too long ago. And when I'm trying to save it, it was saying some error or some bullshit. So I'm doing another retake of this. So if I seem extra hype, it's just that I'm just tired of doing these reviews. But hey, I can, I got time, whatever, you know, I got nothing to do. So at the moment this evening, so it's not like it's stopping me from everything. You know, things can always be worse. I ain't crying over spilled milk. So let's get into this, y'all. Okay. Black Ink Crew, Season 2, Episode 5. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, now we got the beginning scene where we got Duchess and um C's talking, whatever. And C's wanna find out what happened between the meeting between Duch um, Duchess and Sassy. And like I said, when Duchess sits here and she gets possibly questioned, she's so quick to sit here and play the person that's dumb and stuff like that. And I really think this bitch, besides just because she's fucking with C's and stuff with some man with some type of power in her mind. Um, and her little degrees and shit, and just because she put in glass school, woo, 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 but, you know, she thinks that she's better than folks. I'm starting her always so quick questions, saying, like, people are beneath her, or bring up her education status in some way, or talking about how stupid a person is, or dumb, or irrelevant. Bitch, you ain't nobody, but wasn't what it's got them show, nobody even know who the fuck you is. And even if you're on the show, there will be others. You are brain blacking down. Only thing good about blacking now is the goddamn intro. That's the only thing good about at, left about Black Ink Crew is I mean, as far as anything attached for the Black Ink original employees for all this bullshit went down. You know what I mean? But that's the only thing ill about Black Ink now is the fucking intro. Okay, everything else is pretty much downhill. And she want to sit here and think like I'm so much better than people and shit like that. Who gives a fuck? You're not being nobody because you got degrees. That's like my ass sitting up here, you know, with a goddamn graduation cap on and degrees and shit like this here. I just wanted to sit here and, and, and show you my degree. She might as well just sit here. That's like my ass just sitting up there doing that. That is stupid. You know, just she might as well just do this and shit. Just have it on top of her head or get a tattoo of a replica copy of, you know, replica of one of her degrees. Since she feels it's so irrelevant and important. But like I said, that does not make you better nobody because you have degrees, okay? You know, um... That's what, that's what I'm saying. It's this bullshit of thinking you're better than people. And the reason why you think you're better than people is pretty stupid, okay? And it's really sad that you know, they're belittling folks just because of some education or even financial status. That is really retarded to me. You know, just a stuck-up personality and shit. Anyway, back to that bitch. Um, okay, now she want to sit here and tell me how she ain't no bully and all this other stuff. And I do everything myself, you know, basically trying to claim that she's dependent. But actually, she is very dependent because if that was the case, then why the fuck would she need to depend her herself so much on trying to destroy C's relationship? She's, you know, if she felt like she could be by herself, then she, then she should, you know, she can get her own friends, she can get her own space, you know what I mean? But the, the, the stream that she's going to trap C's into some shit is complete bullshit, you know what I mean, and it's pretty sad, but that's just how, she, you know, how, you know, how that bitch rolls, and so anyways, um, she, of course, is sitting here, wants to bring up about Puma making his own shop and stuff, and Sassy going there with him, and he's up here, you know, the first thing they want to talk about again, C's isn't a lot of that, too, and I'm starting to realize when C's meant it, remember, y'all, if y'all seen episode, you know, the first episode, uh, first season, the first episode, C's lets you know less than 30 seconds, 30 minutes or less that he's an asshole. And so he may seem like one of those people who's like, cool, but it's like, he's so much of an asshole to a certain point is, it's kind of almost not shocking that he would quote, quote, put, you know, put some pussy before his friends or whatever else, or put, you know, you know, put a per, um, a rela um, romantic relationship in front of friends or business or whatever, because if he was already an asshole, this kind of just brought it up into a whole extreme. And then he getting some, ex you know, getting a little fame off of this show and shit and part more clientele. And you got this bitch in his ear and stuff like that. But he has the mentality anyway. He's he kind of he got some snake tendencies. He got some snake, you know, bite your ass and shit tendencies, whatever. Right. And so, 
you know, they're up there talking about because, you know, Puma, you know, I don't like how Dutch just always also goes at somebody, you know, physical features most of the time, okay? But it ain't about the education somewhat. She's so quick to talk about their physical features or sexuality shit, like how she gonna bring about Sassy being a lesbian or if Teddy about his lesbian pussy better than straight. What the fuck? Like I said beforehand, what does sexuality have to do with that? And then she got a nurse be up there bringing up, you know, this time about Sassy only got one tat. Um... In this, in that business, to a certain point, um, you don't need actually any tats to see if a person knows what the fuck they're doing or not. And second of all, um, with Puma, why well, just because she knows she makes a little rude ass comment about his shade? You know, like bitch, you ain't beyond, you ain't, <laughs> you, you so decent looking, but I mean, even if you were, um, um, Holly Berry, beautiful, whatever you want to call it beauty fades and then you know like I said even Holly Berry for a while was having a lot of man problems you know I'm just saying you know don't get beside yourself and she really is I don't really appreciate her sitting here trying to come at Puma because he is a brown brown skinned man that, that and talking about his tats you can't see his tats in any way what does what does his shade have to do with anything are you trying to, to indirectly say like he's ugly I don't know it's just I don't like how she's trying to come at people like the way she does whatever she really need to look in the mirror for a very long time so we up here um there's a lot going on but actually you know you got C's trying to say Puma ran black ink to the ground if that's the case then considering that your ass can't pay the light bill and shit like that um, for several, several months until after they just cut the lights off and shit. And they got to even bring the marshal in just to turn the motherfuckers off on top of that. Um, then, you know, like I said, it's like if you, if the, um, if he ran to the ground in, is that how the employees didn't run and run away until Duchess basically put, you know, kind of pushed that, you know, to happen. I mean, Alex, like I said, she's kind of irrelevant and it didn't matter whether she stayed or not because as far as I'm concerned, you know, she did shit on her own to get herself thrown out of Blackie. You know, she's irrelevant to the, everybody else. Sometimes they put, you know, some of them bring up like Alex had left and stuff like that. But she could, she should have been fired because bitches was unprofessional, throwing brown furniture and shit and telling customers what damn tat she should get and shit like that. Acting like she was having, you know, she was just spazzing out and shit or whatever the fuck it was. Okay, next thing. So, you know, you got, um, he up here, like I said, now suddenly wants to take credit. And it kind of reminds me, like I said, that disrespectful shit he did to stealing old shit and rubbing his face about taking his, you know, customer and stuff like that, okay? But then, like, somebody, oh my gosh, I forgot who had said it about compromising, and I wish I remember their name, but, um, one of the YouTubers I was watching about saying about this, but it was an interesting point was, you know, you get an attack and y'all supposed to compromise stuff. And he basically changed the whole, the dude's whole tattoo with Mike Santani or whatever his name was, whatever. But, um, back to what's on this episode. Now you got Puma. Now Puma, you know, for him, for C's be up there kind of like, you know, taking some of his credibility away and shit. Um, and then like I said, C's, if you know the C's talks like he been in the tat game for a long ass time. Now I'm not going to take away that, you know, he kind of, you know, he kind of nice with it what he does. And stuff like that. But it turns out, I find, you know, we find out that he only been tanning for about seven years. And, um, you know, some of the dudes, I mean, I haven't seen my, less Eric is some of the dudes, I, you know, like the tattoo artists I went to. You know, there's plenty of people I know or, I mean, heard of that they got plenty of years on their belt. And they don't have, like, this arrogant ass tattoo, you know, like, you know, I got to remind myself to, you know, or remind everybody what I meant to say. That, um... You know, I've been tattooed for several years and stuff like that. And, I mean, he just only had seven years in the game. And you think he'd been, you know, you know, one of them living legends, OGs when it comes to tattooing. You know what I mean? So, um, like I said before, you know, Yui Puma is actually getting a, a, some type of award for doing a lot of putting a lot of work and helping out in, I think, the community in Harlem. And you got Walk there, Ocean, and Teddy. And Sassy ends up coming later on. And at first she feels, I, I think, I mean, she knew that uh, Duchess was lying, but just the whole situation I could tell was just kind of like pissing her off, which was understandable about her, you know, just the whole situation and shit like that. And she told Teddy, because Teddy was saying, you know, to Puma before Sassy came about, you know, he feels neutral, but he hasn't been personally violated yet. 
But, you know, he did question him more than like, okay, is it my next on the list once, you know, Sassy told her what um, Duchess had said. But even though he wasn't directly violated, it's her saying shit to his face. For her to be putting Teddy under the bus with something, not only he didn't say, but something he was trying to finish and say, like, basically, like, you know, he admitted, like, you know, that went too far and blah, blah, blah. He's not the one who said the shit. That is, you know, her still slandering him and, you know, lying on his behalf and putting on some bullshit that has nothing to do with him. So it's kind of like, yeah, bro, you may not be violent, but I hope you see this goddamn you know, television show and realize, like, okay, this bitch is a snake, you know. So back to the story. Now, Puma takes the time to plug in when he gets in, you know, gets goes up there, you know, to the mic at the ceremony and accepts this award. I don't know if he was the only person that, you know, that I think he was the only person to honor, like, the special ceremony dedicated to him. Or, you know, maybe they focus on him because, you know, this had to do with the show, but... He takes the time out to talk about he. That's when he. That's when he's gonna make the shot. Now Teddy is the only one that's mad about the shit. Okay, he's like, damn, that's a bitch move. Blah 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 blah. Whatever the case was, but to a certain point, you have to think about why. I mean, he ain't looking. He's like, my lord, that's gonna make me choose. My lord, is this gonna be the seas? And I'm thinking like, now you know how Dutch is just want everybody out there. Don't think because you bam a shit like that that you may not be next. Okay, you know she only might be holding on to him a little bit. Sorry about that, y'all. Only because he's fam and shit like that. But that's no host bar. She just lets you know that she's trying to throw you on the goddamn bus with sassy. Dude, you better be careful. Think a little harder. Just think a little harder. Just one, two, three, four, five. Think a little harder, okay? Think a little longer and harder about that shit, okay? Because she's trying to take everybody out the game, including your ass, Teddy. You and your ass girl, okay? And your Teddy custom-made shirts, okay? So I'm just saying that um, he better be careful, all right? And he need to understand it. Because what is like this? What... It's like, as long as I know, you know, because even, oh, shit, they both are smiling today, so, because they like, Palmer is a bitch. Okay, Palmer takes care of the bitch, you know, whatever the case is. And he, and, you know, especially Walt, and Walt and Oates is probably saying, as long as I get a job, okay, you know, Walt is kind of like this. As long as I know I get a job, I ain't got to worry about no bitch, come, you know, coming at me and shit like that, and I get my many cures when I'm supposed to, on time and shit, because, you know, my cuticles always got to be straight. And, you know, they got to make sure to get the edges, okay, get the dirt on the nails, you know, <laughs> that's that's all Walt is worried about, okay, and taking his pictures on the side, okay, that he can put on Instagram. I'm <laughs> saying, okay, I'm just playing, y'all. So. Now, you know, with with that, we got old shit is thank he's you know, God bless him. Bless oh bless oh well. Okay, I don't want to put his name in the same sentence with the you know, Hamlet Bottle, okay. But I'm just gonna say about him. He got the nerves be talking like as if he is on death row and he's gonna be executed tomorrow. Cause he's sitting here, I wanna have my last party. And uh he wants, I guess, a party like they usually have. And C's come up with the idea like, no, man, we should have something different. And he wants to, I guess, have like, this is how that pool party comes up. And here's Duchess sitting up here putting her two cents, which nobody gave a fuck about. With the other two cents that she put in that nobody, you know, people wanted to throw back to her because nobody wanted her two cents. You know what I mean? And she's up and talking, well, we're having a party. So basically she's trying to tell her. Tell, I mean, her is trying to tell, I'm telling her, I'm sorry, because I'm tired, especially my, a lot of times I've been trying to do this vid, okay, so bear with me here, y'all. Um, she's telling, oh shit, like, we're going to tell you who you're going to invite to the party, you know, unless other people want to pay for it, we're going to decide, like, this, oh shit, is their child or something, you know what I mean? And, um, I'm the age child of that. And so, um, I noticed, did you all notice that they were sitting around and shit? The same thing, um, Marie Antoinette, okay, like I said again, shout out to Marie Manette, uh, Chanel for talking about Marie Antoinette, because I didn't feel like looking that up. I don't know about said so like I said, y'all, I'm tired, and I'm trying to give the remaining model be that's like, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm, you know, that makes me want to stop the vid, so, like I said, work with me here. But like I said, shout out to, you know, Chanel, one of my subjects again, if I didn't already say it. Um, but, you know, she up here talking about people just lounging around the city. And it's, this is the same area she was bitching about people were sitting around at. But aren't they sitting around? You know, ain't this bitch playing on extra skit on the iPad? I'm just saying, she wasn't doing too much sitting out in front. She was sitting out front. I mean, oh shit, I'm just saying, yeah, she's so quick to talk about certain folks. 
But yeah, she's doing the same thing she was so called bitching about and got C's, which like I said, C's, you know, can we all like put 25 cents, all, you know, all of us can contribute and all of us like contribute a deposit at least 25 cents or a dollar at the maximum and put a pay by pay, pay, pay account for this upcoming Christmas. So C's can get his balls back, you know. We can all put on layaway or something like that, cause he ain't got his balls, you know. His his balls been gone, okay. So, you know, like I said, you know, I think either Teddy or oh shit was like, oh shit was talking about, you know, when she talk trying to check him about who's gonna be by the party. He's like, okay, so y'all, um, does that mean you know I'm supposed to, you know, you run the shop now? And then I noticed a new word. I had to write this down once to. Moisture, because they want sassy to come basically because of the moisture, which is another word for fine women that you want to swim in. So they try and make sure to get plenty of moisture. All right, just to let y'all know that. And um, Jada's kids come in, you know, as one of, you know, he, he's from the lot. I mean, ill, whatever. I still keep, what is it, Sleep Louch is the name of the other third dude that I keep forgetting. But Style P and Jada Kiss are main ones I keep remembering. They always want to stood out, especially Jada Kiss to me, whatever. He's coming in to get a tattoo loyalty up here, right? And I'm glad before when they actually are doing the tat that they show that, you know, just because it's on the arm does not mean you're not in pain. But, you know, I have, you know, recently I showed y'all the tat, my only tat I'm probably going to get in my arm as far as right now. And um, just because, you know, sometimes you hear about people will say certain areas is going to hurt way less, whatever. Uh-uh. I got here, here, I get a couple up here, got a lower calf, lower back, um, where my tats are. And I, it wasn't, you know, even though it's been several years since the last time I got my tats, because my last one 2003, I know this is off the subject, but they got to do with tats, right? So what I'm saying is when I got this on my arm, I didn't feel no major reduction in pain. You know, I felt the same motherfucking pain I felt when I got this one here that I did here, okay? So I'm glad Jada Kiss maybe just wanted to keep it real and shit like that. I was like, ah, it hurt. You know, this is on the arm part. And like I said, you know, I'm, I'm just letting y'all know. Y'all think about getting a tattoo, never had one before. Those things hurt. I mean, they're pain. They're only painful when you get them done. It ain't like you're still in pain after you get it done. But it is going to be some pain. So get ready for that. You know what I mean? So anyways, um, you know, you got Jada Kiss trying to tell him about you know, before when he, you know, C's got him drawing up the tattoo right before he actually does it, he's sitting here trying to tell him, like, dude, you got to talk to him and stuff like that. You know, friendship is friendship, whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever, you know. He was basically say the same thing that Mama's, uh, uh, Ma Mama's, uh, C's mom was saying in the last episode about the bullshit that went down. She was even saying the same thing. So, you know, I don't know if this was taken out, whatever, but. And the last time I checked, with people getting a tattoo loyalty, and even me knowing somebody who has tattoo loyalty, I thought when people get loyalty and shit like that, that's a representation of they suffer what's important to them. What the hell is C's? Because she want to sit here and take the blame off of the fuckery he has caused, okay? Or the asshole, whatever we all know is in disguise. Whatever, right? He's sitting here trying to say, like, some, um, you know, here you got one of your mans must have walked off or whatever, or came this law, whatever he's trying to say, something to the crew. And he, you know, about his um, Jada Kiss crew, Jada Kiss never said anything, at least to my knowledge, or maybe I heard it wrong, about he was getting a tattoo because somebody was disloyal or he lost one of his boy. He was just, and he's because he said after he got that tattoo, he was going to get family, probably another tat. And I'm thinking, like, that's just something that's important to him that he wanted to get. Now, I know this is irrelevant, but I, I don't know why I thought, like, Jada Kiss probably had more tats than that on his arm and stuff like that. He didn't really have a lot of tats up and down his arms and shit. I don't know, just a little weird uh, observation. Okay. So, um, after he left, whatever the case was, you got Teddy who decides to talk to C's and try to talk a little more sense to him about, you know, basically how the Black Ink crew was pretty much going down, how the relationship is kind of affecting, you know, the whole business thing or how thing, you know, Duchess are in a manipulation, which we've seen. We, she did it so quickly in the first scene, but like I said, C's can only let B go the fuck he was. He already was already an asshole, which he, like I said, already has admitted, you know what I'm saying? So, that just kind of threw him over the edge. You got the fame, you got this, you know, this cra crazy chick uh, manipulation who has some pussy whipped, okay, just... <laughs> Okay, and wrapped around her finger, and then she got the nurse have the man balls in her purse. Okay, and so that's how it's going. So she sees being, you know, that he has support to his master, has to basically tell her what Ted, Teddy said. 
You know, I don't know who the people that she was talking to. Was that C sister, whatever? We don't know. Okay, next. So she is up there telling my course again, it's a dumb question. You know, this is a time I'm hearing her talk but like, you know, shit like that you really don't want to hear anymore because she just won't shut the fuck up and stuff like that. And you want her to shut the fuck up. You know, whatever. So, you know, you got C's having his dilemma and stuff like that, whatever the case is, or decision, or he realized, like, how she's just kind of drama, but you're still fucking with her and stuff like that, so it doesn't matter at this note. Now, we have a, a scene, you know, you got Alex, you know, got to get her five minutes in, and then you got Walt and Dice, who looks like a 12-year-old and shit like that, and he looks like he's going to get car until he's 85, and you got Puma and assassin turns. They had, like, this barbecue, some area, some on top of a rooftop, whatever, and, you know, they're just talking about things, how basically black rinkers went downhill and all this other stuff. And Alex, again, still, you know, they're asking, like, what's her problem with old shit? And, of course, she's still trying to say, like, he needs to tell the truth. I'm about to get a little graphic on y'all. You know, you know, just because you say nothing happened, whatever, there are some people who don't want to think, like, all sex or anal sex is sex at all. You know, they only think vaginal penetration is. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I do think she flat out just completely had sex with him, and she just in some whole denial thing, but she gonna claim Teddy, who's throwing, you know, um, sta you know, um, unclean draws on, thrown in her face and shit like that, and the way he disrespected her, and she still sat there and ass-kissing him and shit, and, you know, but, you know, some people want something that they can't have or have no bad, uh, have no reason having, I mean, old shit is a fuck-up, too, but he wouldn't treat her nowhere as bad as, see, like, Teddy had ended up doing her, because he's in love, you know, he one of them artistic you know, lover boys and shit, whatever, you know, go figure. You can let, give him a prayer and a counting it alphabet, re, um, a reading rainbow uh, arrangement. Mm, take a look, it's in a book, you know what I'm saying? So, anyways, the last couple scenes had to do with Teddy and Bonnie Blue song, which, like I said, should get patented. Like I said, like I said, the memory, time for me to get off here. Okay. Now, Teddy, of course, has to sing Teddy Love the Bitches, also known as Bonnie Blue song. And, um, she, you know, he, um, there's a scene where Sky, who was in the last season, there was one episode that I didn't see. And Sky was fighting so hard, her bustier came out. She must love bustiers and brawl tops and shit, because she had kind of like that top. And, you know, I did love her pants color. Yeah, and then she had her mom. And her mom's a pit bull, too, it turns out, because I think Teddy wanted was hugging her, and it was like, are you not? She's like, no. And she was getting her first tattoo. I know they made sure they didn't say, that, um, show her, maybe because... You know, either she was mean or because she was older. I don't know what the case was, but it just seemed like they made sure they didn't show that. Their main thing was to focus on, I guess, they'll get more of, um, you know, you know, they'll get more of, they were, blah, 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 blah. they were focused on making sure that they go with the storyline between Sky being one of the bitches that was supposed to fight, um, for, um, Teddy. They, they thought that was more important. And they probably could have filmed Sky's mother getting the tap, but they're like, uh-uh. This is more exciting than, you know, Sky's mom getting tatted or whatever, right? So you got Sky and uh, Teddy talking shit. And they make, I guess, like, I think C's and I think what or old, old shit is up here. Because Duchess, you know, is hiding off friendly with um um Sky and shit like that. And, you know, Sky was glad that Alexa was out there because she liked how she was disrespecting the shop and shit. So that's, that's basically why she was trying to beat or had beat her ass. I don't know. And, um... Of course, Duchess is going to act nice to her because Sky looked like she'll molly -wop. I don't think, I don't know if Duchess is a fighter and shit like that, but it looked like Sky would, you know, knock her ass right back to North Carolina, wherever the fuck she came from. You know what I mean? So, you know, this seemed like also that's the reason why she also felt that she can come and be, you know, that's why she acted nice to her because um, of those circumstances. So, you know, Sky and um, Teddy are flirting when the mom is going back there and I guess there's a sign about the tattoo or whatever, and, um, she's up, sitting up there, um, um, you know, like, talking, and they're flirting stuff, and they side on going on a date, or in other words, you know, I'm gonna get some dick, you know, from her angle, because that's pretty much what it was, you know, he gonna get the draws, and literally, in the end, he does get the draws, and, because after that scene, when they go have a date, you know, you got Sky asking about, you know, his love life and why he's the way the way he is. And he's just basically like, you know, women are assholes too at the end of the day. And he don't want to get her or don't want to be bothered with the bullshit. So he just fuck them and leave them type of thing. And she's trying to say like, well, I just want some dick and want to keep going too, whatever. She gives him a draws, her, I mean, her panties, literally, and a hit in his hand. And she's talking about shout out, you know, my legs is going to be behind, you know, my ears, stuff like that. So she sits here and, um, 
you know, he follows her, she, you know, she says, follow me to the bathroom, and, you know, she, Teddy was even shocked his own self, like, damn, you know, I thought it was at least gonna happen after eight or nine shots, so shit, it didn't take that long, you know, they, they, they just start sipping on their drinks, and maybe that was good editing, but, um, that was quick as hell, okay, so, then you got another scene where, um, about, you got, oh, shit, you got this basketball player, make a long story short, you know, it looked like he had six fingers in the tat that he was getting, because it was, had him, like, look like this be a picture of him, and he's praying, he's got the angel wings, has skulls, or something about forgive me, something like that, and C's had noticed the error, but it was correct before, of course, it was tagged this time, but, you know, oh, shit was saying, like, actually, um, I didn't pay attention to that part for some reason, I, um, but he was saying it looked, I noticed it looked like six fingers, but I didn't see um, that if it was actually six fingers or error like, oh, she was trying to claim. Oh, she was trying to claim like, man, uh, it was it was actually five, um, four fingers on the thumb, but it just looked like the way he had a position. Okay. So anyways, he does the tat, he you know, um, you know, oh, she was just talking about, you know, you can learn a lot from people when you tat them in. You know, yeah, you do because you know you have to carry the conversation makes it easier that your person getting tatted on because that shit does hurt, okay? Um, and of course that's that was our two tattoo minimum for uh, minimum for this episode, and the last main part that stood out, of course, was the pool party. Um, number one, why nobody got old shit, got old shit no trunks and uh, trunks I don't think cost that much and why was he swimming in his drawers? Number two, we had um. First, this what happened. Make a long story short, you know, got Teddy bring this chick named Ashley there, and then the Indian girl. That's the name of this dancer. That, ooh, that's also excuse me. Um, that's also one of his quote quote friends or buddies. Um, is also invited. Now they didn't show that. Now they show what old shit was at inviting Sky and stuff, and they already know she a firecracker. But yet they didn't show nothing about. Who invited India to the party? You know, was it set up purposely because they knew they were going to get some extra views or get people tune in because of three bitches at him? And, you know, oh shit, it's like, you know, it's my birthday. He's getting all the gifts. I'm not getting anything. <laughs> oh, Lord. Bless him. Let's bless him. Anyway, so Teddy got this one new chick. You got Sky there. And, you know, even with some can Teddy sit down and shit like that, you got India, the dancer chick who got the Jay-Z verse up and down her back. She up here damn, you know, giving them a lap dance and stuff, whatever, and disregarding, you know, even though, you know, Teddy, you know, is just Mr., you know, love him and leave him type of dude, whatever, and he's not tied down to everybody, that's still disrespectful to, to that chick, you know what I mean? And in a certain situation, unless it's some crazy situation where they're all involved, or, you know what I mean, or something like that, you know. But what I'm saying is, is that that was very disrespectful. And you would think India is his chick, whatever, and got the nurse to be looking at um, um Ashley, whatever, his um his friend that he brought to the party as the other woman. Doesn't it seem familiar? Like, oh, shit, with his first baby mama. Okay, anyways, um, here comes Sky, you know, because she finally gets out his lap and stuff. But, you know, Teddy, you know, the situation to Teddy is over, is starting to become where he's kind of happy about it because he's sitting here like, oh, all these women are fighting over me. But as soon as India sat there and did that kind of like rude act, he should have told her, you know, get the fuck on and told her, showed her you know, she should have been, you know, uh-uh, get that, go on with that bullshit, whatever. Because I think around that time, too, when she off there sitting and leaning on him and shit, even Ashley didn't even say anything. Ooh, she just said, did you want to get in the pool or something like that? I don't know, just something irrelevant. But she was like, did you want to get in the pool with your hair? Maybe she was trying to, you know, quote, quote, as they want to say, throw shade, whatever, at her. But um, it wasn't nothing serious. She wasn't on the level that um, the disrespect that um, India showed towards, you know, her, as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, Sky's up there, you know, saying hi, wherever the case is. And India wants to know who is this chick and blah, blah, blah. You know, Ashley didn't even ask who, I don't think, if who India was nor Sky. You know what I mean? And then I don't think she had time to know it because India's trying to ask her, you know, oh, it's this, you know. And Sky's like, I gotta fucking tell you wherever the case is. And I think they kind of break it up then. And then, you know, even Ashley's asking India, you know, they're kind of like, you know, this is so much apart, whatever. And ask her, do you want a drink, whatever? And she's like, you ain't being disrespectful to me. Me, now you want to give me a drink? And I'm thinking... Did they edit something out? You don't want came to her disrespectful and shit, whatever that bullshit you pulled. Now all of a sudden, you want to sit here and quote, quote, check her? Okay, that bitch is crazy. So it wasn't until she and Sky got to it or walked in, who got in front of whose face, whatever, and she's still trying to check Sky. Sky let her know, you know, I ain't about that bullshit. 
And then you got the king, by the way, king and queen sees and duchess make an appearance. And you kind of like, they even come in like, oh, we are better and beyond. Um, I think they only say something to Teddy. Um, they didn't say nothing to Puma, Sassy. Um, they really too much almost them. They didn't say nothing to nobody. They just sat aside away from people. And after, you know, that, whatever, they just up there to tease and talk about the situation like it's a national Drew Gafford channel, shit like that. But y'all, if y'all look from our angle too, y'all some damn national geographic shit your own damn selves. So anyways, you got, um, a uh, after, you know, Sky and any about to get into it, Sky, I think, was able to push her. Then you got the bodyguards come in. And that's when Ted is ass, after he realized, like, I can't get no fight out of this, or whatever the case was, then he finally, after all that bullshit, which could have been prevented, because I want to know who the fuck invited India in the first damn place. Um, and also with the Sky shit, we know what's close to some bullshit too, so I don't know, say, especially after him and Sky had screwed, was even worth taking, um, Ashley there. I don't know if Sky would have been like that towards Ashley, but it, like I said, it was, it was a bunch of bullshit waiting to happen, eh? either way it went. So, Sky... And Indy almost get into it, and Teddy finally um, takes her out of there and tells her she has to leave. And then it's Coco post be all this fun. That's when old shit goes and draws and swims and all this other stuff. But the thing is, is that I think Teddy or she'll say, like, this is how black uh, black and used to be. And, um, you know, um, you know, some families do be a part of stuff like that. But it still seems so distant. So it's not the same unity as it was even after Alex had left, you know, last season as far as I'm concerned. Because you got Duchess one of polls and shit like that. Caesar sent there probably with some Hennessy and shit, you know, by itself. You know, I, don't, I didn't see any little clips. Because it made it seem like a little family, some type of music video and shit. Um, you got old shit and sassy and puma and walt and them and i don't know like i said i don't even know what telly even said even hi to uh, sassy for them you know just saying you just seen all these separations and shit and it, to me personally it wasn't no nudity unity you know like i said before you know the only thing good left by ink, at black ink now is the intro of the show that's the only thing good left the way it's going so, all right, y'all, thank you for bearing with me. I am tired and stuff of that nature, and y'all have a good night. Rate, comment, subscribe, whatever. And, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm planning on, like I said, if y'all looked at the Love and Hip Hop review, you know, plug, <laughs> okay? But I, uh, what I said there is I, pl I, plan, I plan on stop reviewing Blacklist because y'all don't like that show. Uh, the last two episodes, I was behind two, the last well, the fifth, fourth and fifth episode. And so I was thinking about possibly good. If y'all want me to review um the show called Almost Humans, y'all also leave that in the comments box. And I, I ain't going to add that. I already got, you know, I reviewing these upcoming shows coming up, like, you know, Real House Side Lemon and all that other stuff. But, you know, if y'all want me to review Almost Humans, because I'm considering that, and that depends if it's a good show or not, you know, y'all let me know. But like I said, the people have spoken, and y'all have spoken that y'all don't like Blacklist. At least, um... Besides Mike B, shout out to Mike B, <laughs> you know. Um, at least most of y'all don't like watching reviews. Y'all liked it only the first one, but after that, mm, no. <laughs> so, anyways, y'all, y'all have a good night, and y'all take care. Bye.